today i have a special bonus video for you guys it is one that i am doing with a friend it's a collaboration with amy from our blessed family and we're going to be making amish friendship bread without the starter it's a cinnamon bread that she's wanted to try at least i believe that's what she said but the twist is i'm making the normal way and she's making it the gluten-free way because her and her baby girl cannot have gluten or they are very limited on their gluten and like there's certain things they can't have but it's got to be made certain ways and these kinds of things but with something like this she cannot have gluten so she's going to do the gluten-free version so if you're gluten-free after you finish watching this one <laughs> go on over to her channel and it will be up the same time this one is so um you can find it and i will leave the link to her channel down below um this is going to make two loaves of bread and it is a new to me recipe i don't know if we're gonna like it but i could not figure out well i didn't try very hard how to figure out how to split an egg <laughs> actually that would be the only thing that really would be something that we couldn't split but what i decided to do was go ahead and make the two loaves and have one to put in the freezer because i already know we're gonna like it it's a cinnamon bread i mean i love cinnamon breads but a little bit about amy uh she's married to cameron or cam and they have an 11 year old daughter named ireland she is uh very sweet she loves dance and she actually has the same birthday i do so she's my special girl and um over time i mean i have known amy for i want to say going on two years maybe just a year though but over time we've just built a friendship that we talk every day so <laughs> Even though she's way across the country, we talk every day. So we build a friendship. We find that we like the same things, cooking and just all sorts of taking care of our family things. And it's just something that, I mean, we have a lot of things in common. We have a lot of the same thoughts. And we love to do Bible study together. And we just love to do things that are the same. So... Let me stop babbling and get on to the recipe because that's what you're here for. Or actually, most of you are here to see my crazy. But today's a little bit different, which also today you will get three videos. So this is the second one or maybe the third. I'm not sure. We haven't exactly decided what time this is going to be up. But you'll know when it pops up because I'm not telling you that it's coming up until after it does. At least I don't think I am. I might have already let the cat out of the bag. I sometimes can't contain myself. So, I'm going to get the camera turned down here. I have lots of things. I'm going to tell you the things that are in the recipe, but I'm not going to tell you the exact measurements. I will link this down below as well. Now, I don't know. I know that with cookbooks, from what I understand, you're not supposed to share because it's copyrighted. But if it's online, I don't know. So... I'm not going to tell you the exact measurement, but I will put this down there so you can print it off. And honestly, that's what I would rather someone do anyway, because if I'm sitting there and someone's saying two cups of flour, two eggs, and all these other things, I'm sitting there having to pause the video to write it down. I would much rather have something that I could just watch and enjoy seeing how it's cooked and then go print it out if it looks like something I want. So that's my preference. So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna get the camera turned around and shut my mouth. Okay, so I have lots of things around me. I have oil, vanilla, eggs, pudding mix. <laughs> this is the second thing I made with pudding mix recently. Buttermilk, baking powder, sugar, salt, cinnamon, just lots of things. And I have two pans that I have sprayed with my Baker's Joy. And the reason why I like Baker's Joy is because it has flour already in it. One pan is bigger than the other one, but I think it's still going to be okay because I don't have any choice. <laughs> 
and I also have my oven preheated to 325. I have a bowl here for wet ingredients, which eventually will have all ingredients in it. I have a bowl here for the topping, and then I have one for the dry ingredients. And I also have one to crack my eggs in. Why am I telling you all this? I have no clue. Actually, this is for the dry ingredients. I forgot that I'm backwards. So let's go ahead and get started and like I said, shut my mouth, but not really. Um, so I'm gonna put in here the flour, the pudding mix, cinnamon, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. So let's get started with the, I'm gonna just get started with the sugar because it's, it's one of the, no it's not. Good thing I looked again. I do need it, but I don't need it first. I need flour first, which, okay, I want somebody to explain this to me, and I know sugar dissolves. I know sugar, like, most of the time is liquid form naturally, like honey, maple syrup, sugar cane is, is liquid that comes out of the cane. Um, bless you. No, it sneezed. Um, but, um... Why is it that you always mix it with the wet ingredients and not the dry ingredients? You let me know that down in the comments if you know. I have my theories, but I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, and I'm not ashamed to say it. And I am leveling off my flour, and this is all-purpose flour. All right, so there's that. And I am gonna move it out of my way because I don't need it anymore and I just don't wanna knock it off. That'd be super huge mess. And nobody wants a mess like that. All right, so the pudding mix and I use, this is instant pudding. And you're supposed to have one of the large boxes and I'm gonna just go ahead and tell you that. But I don't have any of that and I can't go buy it, and I wouldn't go buy it because I have the small boxes. There's this store here, and I had actually shared it on a haul a long time back, but there's a store here where that they have like Amazon returns, and there was a huge box of this vanilla jello uh, pudding for like $6. That stuff's normally a dollar a piece or more now, and it was six dollars for 24 yes i'm gonna buy it because the the date on it and y'all know that i don't care about dates well if i'm buying something i do but uh but the date on it is way a long time away <laughs> it's nowhere close all right so let me stop talking about all that and just get to doing the cooking or baking actually we're not cooking today we're baking now i'm going to try to open up my cinnamon there we go and I need, is it two teaspoons total? Yes, because I'll need another one later. And I may be dropping a tiny bit into the bowl, but that's not a big deal. I'm not gonna worry about it because cinnamon is delicious and it's good for you. So, cinnamon, baking powder, baking soda. And there is a difference. Oh goodness, I opened the wrong side. There is a difference in the things. Baking soda, I need this much. And with baking, it's gotta be, it's a science. So you, you need to be as exact as you can <laughs> because you end up with a crazy mess otherwise. All right, and the salt. Now I'm gonna whisk these together and I'm gonna sit them to the side and there's not much salt in this recipe either, which I like that because 
if y'all know I've been trying to do some low sodium things recently. Not necessarily for me, but for Donna to be able to see. And this is, I mean, it's got a sodium in it, but it's, it's still lower sodium, if that makes sense. Um, let's see, what's the sodium in this? It is 154 milligrams for one slice, and there's, uh, let's see, it said how many slices you get from each loaf. The serving size is one loaf. No, one slice. Stop lying like that. Two loaves. There's 10 slices per loaf. So there's 20 slices here. So I think that's pretty good. All right, now this is for my wet ingredients. And I'm gonna start with the eggs. And I always crack them in a separate bowl because if I get a shell in there, I want to be able to get it out quickly. Um, if there's a bad egg, I want to be able to not ruin my whole dish because it can happen. Even, I mean, you don't know what might happen with an egg because you can't see inside of it until you open it up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and whisk these up a little bit just to get them a little head start. All right, that's good. All right, now we're gonna put the oil, sugar, buttermilk, and vanilla extract in. So sugar is, how much sugar? Which actually, there's sugar already in it because of the vanilla uh, pudding, because you know there's sugar in that. All right. Vanilla la la la, yummy stuff. And then I'm gonna put in the oil, and I'm using avocado oil. And the reason why I'm using it is because it's um, a milder tasting oil. And it was a smaller bottle, and I didn't wanna get my big bottle of olive oil to try to do it because the olive oil that I have open is the more robust flavor and I didn't want to use it because I just didn't. <laughs> I have no reason other than I didn't. And the last thing is buttermilk and this right here is a bag of milk. <laughs> it is a, one cup of buttermilk that I had I had bought some buttermilk on sale. It was like one of those manager specials. And you know manager specials, you better grab it and you better do something with it quickly. Um, if you want it, that is. Well, it was super great price. So I bought it, I brought it home, and I showed you guys how that I had um, measured it into one cup portions and froze it. I froze it flat. And that way, whenever I um, thawed it out, it was a lot easier. But now let me make sure I've got everything. There's eggs, oil, sugar, buttermilk, and vanilla. Yeah, got everything here. Make sure that's all mixed together really well get all of that oil off of that too and then we'll move these out of the way and I'm gonna bring my dry ingredients back over and it says to add the wet to the dry and mix it until it's combined we'll put this whisk in the sink and I'm gonna grab my little silicone spatula. Y'all know that I love silicone spatulas. And I 
I wanted to tell y'all something else that I thought about this morning. I gravitate toward this big metal bowl a lot. And I know that filming, it would probably be better if I used one of my glass bowls. But this big metal bowl, one, it's got high sides. So I don't have to worry about things coming out as much because I'm a messy baker. And two, it's lighter weight whenever I have to pick it up and pour things in. But now I'm just going to mix this until it's just combined. It says do not over mix. It stresses that it seems. It feels like it's stressing it to me. <laughs> but I'm gonna mix it till it's just combined. And then I'm gonna pour it into the two pans. It smells really good. That is just combined, and now I'm gonna pour it in. And I'm gonna pour a little bit more into this first bowl, uh, that's not a bowl, first pan than the second one because the first one is larger than the second one. And if I find that I need to move, so, oh, that was an awful sound move some over I will but I think we'll be fine I should have moved the sugar excuse me ma'am I've already fed you this morning she's asking me what I'm cooking all right I'm gonna spread it out in there it almost looks as though it's not going to be enough. Like, it just, I don't know. But, we'll see. I'm doing what it says because I want to follow the instructions. It's not my recipe. <laughs> if it was my recipe, who knows what I'd be doing. All right, and I have one more step that I need to do, but I've got to get another measuring. Um, Spoon. Okay, so I'll move this over and in this little bowl I'm going to mix some sugar. Okay, this one's a little bit too small, but I can do it twice. <laughs> I love these measuring spoons because they're long and they're easy to use. And then I'm gonna add cinnamon. That might be a little bit, either a little more or a little less. I'm not sure. It's fine. All right, and then I'm going to mix this together. Make myself dizzy by spinning it around like a mad woman. You know, I probably will end up telling you all about this before. Because if you have Instagram and you follow me over there, I'll probably talk about it. Well, I won't talk about it, but I'll show it on there. All right, so mix this together and then I'm gonna sprinkle it over the two loaves. Try to do it as evenly as I can. And this will be like a really good topping. Have a little crunch and a little yumminess. And I don't know, I know that some of you probably have heard me say it before, but I have this weird reaction to cinnamon, like when I eat it, it sometimes kind of numbs my tongue. It feels kind of strange. I know I've talked about it, but I still can't stop eating it. But this is the thing. I don't remember it ever doing that to me when I was a child. And I'm also wondering if it's just this cinnamon that I have that I'm using right now. 
which I can't remember the brand. I got it from Costco whenever I had a Costco membership. Okay, so now that I've got that on, I'm gonna put it in the oven at 325 for one hour or until a toothpick comes out clean. So I'll come back in an hour, but that's what it looks like right now. Okay, so the bread has been in the oven for an hour and I've already, I just turned it off because I checked them with a toothpick and they're done. I don't know if the sugar was supposed to stay on it like that, but that's what it did. So I'm supposed to let them cool for 10 minutes, 10 minutes in the pan, and then I'm gonna put them onto the wire rack without the pan, and um, then you're supposed to let them cool and eat them, which most likely because this was my breakfast, just what I wanted to do. <laughs> Most likely I'm going to go ahead and cut one of them right after the 10 minutes is up. But this is what they look like. They're dark and they didn't rise. I mean, they rose about, they doubled, most about doubled. And I'm kind of thinking you probably could have just put both of them in one of the, the larger pan, pans and you'd had to bake it longer. I really don't know how it would have turned out, but if you wanted a big loaf. But anyways, I'm going to let these cool for the 10 minutes and I'll come back. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes, and I'm gonna try to see if I can turn this out without all that sugar part. Here, hold on, let me do something real quick before I actually get this out. I'm gonna help myself later, maybe, I don't know. We'll put this down because I can dust this off and wash it. Put that down under this because I know this sugar is going to go everywhere. I just know it is because it didn't like go into the bread. I don't know if it's supposed to or not, but it didn't. So I'm going to help myself with that. I can maybe just not use that and see it's going to go all over. I'm going to dump it on that side. And there we go. Now sugar, sugar is everywhere. They look good. Oh, goodness. They smell so good. And they're super hot right now still. But I am going to cut one of them because I want to try it. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna use one of these serrated knives to cut it. I guess I'll do this one. I don't know, there's supposed to be like 10 slices. I don't know how much to actually cut. I probably should have taken a picture of it for my thumbnail before I did it, but I still have that one I can take a picture of. <laughs> it's fine. That's what the inside looks like. If I can get it to focus. It looks good. All right, I'm gonna move the camera and then I'm gonna taste it for you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna try it and see how I like it. I'm gonna lay it down so that I don't make a mess of it. And this is the outside part, so, which is actually my favorite part of most any bread or anything. I don't know why I like the crispy edge just me. So I'm going to try it. It tastes like what I thought it would. <laughs> it tastes very good. It just tastes like a cinnamony sweet bread. Um, it's really good and the texture is good.
it's moist so it's kind of like a cake but not exactly but it's really good this would be good breakfast <laughs> so with that i'm going to say goodbye but first i want to say thank you to amy for inviting me to this collab it was a really good recipe that you picked definitely a keeper so um like i said i will link this down below and i will link amy's channel down below so you can go check her out she doesn't post a lot but she's trying to post more often so y'all go check her out give her time give her grace and she's getting ex more excited about being able to film and things so that i want to thank her again for inviting me to the collaboration i want to thank you guys for watching this video if you liked it Go ahead and do all the YouTube things. If you didn't, do them anyway. You might like something I do later. You never can tell. I'm always doing all kinds of things. Most importantly, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're doing. And remember, don't take any wooden nickels and be sweet.